Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Friends, welcome to the Encounter program. I am your host, Mark Kimpland, the pastor at the Endwell United Methodist Church. It is the season of fall. It is September. And over the last nine years, uh, having the privilege of being one of the four hosts of the Encounter program, I spend the fall months introducing and welcoming and listening to and learning from new pastors that come into Broome County in the United Methodist Church tradition specifically. And so today it is my extreme honor and privilege to spend some time with the new pastor of the Boulevard United Methodist Church in Binghamton, uh, my brother, Reverend Charlie Young. And I uh, welcome uh, Charlie to the show. Welcome to Broome County, glad you're here. Yeah, thank you for uh, bringing me here. Just, um, Absolutely. So glad to be here. Glad you are here. So let's, uh, let's jump into, um, into our conversation here with our listeners and viewers. Uh, can you give us a little bit of your background, a little, maybe a little bit of family history, oh, right. uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, education, family, however you want to take that so that we kind of have a bedrock, a foundation uh, to our further conversation here. So who is Charlie? <laughs> yeah, I... I was born in Korea and grew up in there. And actually, just I was uh, ordained by Korean Methodist. I became uh, the uh, full connection member there, and then came to the United States to study. Uh, my original purpose was uh, uh, studying at the a couple of uh, at the a couple of theological seminaries, and then getting some degrees and going back to Korea. Mm. But uh, somehow <laughs> God did, had a different plan and I'm yeah. here. The site, your first state was uh, Texas. The I studied at the Perkins uh, School of Theology at yeah. the SMU in Dallas, yeah. Texas. Uh, then I, I moved to Princeton, New Jersey. I studied at the Princeton Theological Seminary. Then I, I started my ministry, uh, especially at the United Methodist context, uh, is uh, uh, from Vermont, okay. Burlington, Vermont. Okay. That is, uh, that time I think more Koreans were leaving uh, there. So, so I, was a Ser I started a Serbian Korean congregation and the following year, uh, district superintendent uh, gave me an opportunity to start the United Methodist Church. That was the 2001. Okay. Since then, I have been in the uh, United Methodist Church, the Troy Conference, and uh, now Upper New York Annual Conference. Yes. And yeah, during that, I experienced a quite culturally diverse, uh, diverse uh, environment. And also, I studied at the uh, Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary uh, in Boston. Yeah, I, I mean, the, my uh, theological journey is more kind of, uh, more conservative to central, more liberal, and then going back to central, a kind of, uh, for me, uh, more, uh, more balance, more, uh, more, you know, balance is, 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 is quite important. Okay. And also, uh, I really wanted to make a, uh, 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 be a good, uh, uh, more relevant, more uh, uh, pastor. So I, yeah, that's why just I, I chose a theologically uh, diverse yeah. kind of, you know, Gordon yeah. Connolly is a theologically more conservative, yes. you know, other, uh, United, uh, I mean, the Princeton and uh, uh, Perkins is uh, more theologically, more liberal schools. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. The, yeah, that's my uh, academic journey. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Well, two questions about that then. You, you piqued my interest. Coming right. from Korea yeah. 
to the United States theologically, yeah. was there a shift there, uh, or, or is it pretty much a melting pot, much like it is here? Um, was was there a, when you began your studies from where you came, um, with with the knowledge and understanding you had theologically, um, was that a shock? Was that different? Was it the same? Um, Not much uh, difference because. Uh, the theological seminaries uh, in Korea, uh, where I studied, uh, yeah, most of the professors studied at, uh, uh, in the United yes. States and then over Germany. Yes. They were quite exposed to the theologically liberal uh, atmosphere. So I think I just okay. studied and I, yeah, and then I came uh, to the United States. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, Princeton and uh, Perkins were theologically quite similar, so, okay, but yes. the Golden Conwell was quite different. Yes, but yes. It, you know, uh, it, it was really good to me because uh, I didn't want to want my uh, theological perspective to left side or to liberal side, liberally uh, tinted. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's why just I yeah I think I I I I, I really like my. Uh, Choice. So you got a broad, a, a broad spectrum of theology. Yeah, exactly. Then. That it's was I, what yes. I uh, was uh, trying to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it seems like it was successful. I mean, you got both both sides, and even the middle side, and yeah, from the progressive, I, right. from the conservative, <laughs> and uh, anywhere mm -hmm, within mm -hmm. that spectrum. It sounds like you know. I think that uh, study and experience uh, really helped me in doing the ministry. Yes. You know, minister, uh, in the ministry setting, you can s meet a uh, uh, quite diverse group of people. Yes. So, yeah, I think that gave me a certain wisdom and method to how to be appropriately to, uh, in, I mean, the in, intermingled with the people yes. and interact with the people yes. and serve with people. Yeah, in that sense, I think it was quite helpful yeah, for me. Yeah, very, very valuable, you know, yeah, to be able I to relate so. with just a host of different theologies and understanding and yeah. beliefs and experiences and upbringings. I, I remember just in my journey, the idea of, um, I came from a very conservative background. Right. Uh, you didn't mm -hmm. question mm -hmm. uh, what the pastor said on a Sunday morning right. had to be right. right. I mean, right. it had to be the truth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I went to Wesley Theological Seminary uh -huh. and my head just exploded, right, <laughs> right. you know, with that, but to be able to hear from both sides and to live through those sides with the congregation and with the people that you're you're shepherding, yeah. Very. You know, my uh, theological shock uh, was uh, uh, ha happened when I was in Korea, especially when I entered the theological seminary for the first time. Yes. You know, in Korea, theological seminary began at the undergraduate school level. Before that, I kind of more I. You know, like most of uh, uh, the Korean Christians, more, I'm not saying fundamentalist, but uh, yeah, almost close to the mm -hmm. fundamentalist. Mm -hmm. And then, but my theological seminar was uh, very liberal. I was uh, shocked. But uh, yeah, through that, I think I re, uh, arrange, uh, re uh, I mean, the adjusted myself to the theological uh, the differences. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's what happened. Yeah. yeah, because most congregations, and I would say ex most specifically in this area especially, right. uh, are melting pots. Yeah, they they yeah. are diverse. Um, yeah, yeah. It, mm -hmm. they, we, we paint with a pretty big paintbrush <laughs> of, right. of, of theologies, and learning to navigate that is right, just right. so, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. valuable and important uh, to still be grace um, to any and all. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. What about your call? Um, let, let's talk about that for a moment, if you could. Uh, could you share with our viewers and listeners? Uh, yeah, your call into I, it has. Uh, it is connected with uh, the the growth of a Korean church in general, yeah, yeah. because I I regard myself as a product of uh, the first uh, growth of Korean churches yes. uh, during the. 60s through 90, early 90s. You know, Korean Christianity, Korean churches exploded. And 
uh, you know, I mean, the, there were a lot of, uh, when I was growing up, I mean, especially the, when I was in the middle school and high school, there was a lot of uh, a revival movement. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and I grew up in the uh, rural uh, uh, countryside. You know, at that time, still Korea was uh, one of the poorest countries, and then, you know, more agriculture, I mean, I mean the uh, focused. Uh, uh, you know, winter season, there was nothing uh, they could do. So I think uh, so uh, many churches had uh, their revival gathering during the winter. I think that was the, when I was the uh, first year of uh, high school. Okay. There was a, a revival gathering at yeah. my home church, mm -hmm. and then we gathered, and then it was more like a, for for American Christians, more a Pentecostal yeah. like experience sure. is, yes. is kind of you know a lot of uh, you know some Pentecostal related uh, 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 gifts or experiences, mm -hmm. uh, tongue speaking yes. and then healing. Yeah. You know, we gathered uh, every night for more than two months. Wow. Wow, for wow, each wow. Uh, every night, uh, three mm -hmm. to four hours, we gathered, we prayed, we yeah. we praised, we prayed, we shared our stories. You know that one night, just I experienced uh, mm. certain uh, presence of the spirit of God. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, I then I, I said to God, I gave myself. I really want to be a, a pastor, yeah. and then I yeah my. Uh, journey as a pastor actually started uh, from that moment. So you can pinpoint a moment right, uh, right, in, yeah, in, yeah. in your so life. The, that, that, actually, uh, that yeah. was the last day of the oh, wow. that year. <laughs> okay. so, yeah, yeah, like yeah. around 10 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, I experienced the strong presence of yes. God. And then, yeah, yeah it was uh, my yeah, calling. Glad, glad, you, uh, glad you were listening. <laughs> but I think I, I have to say this. Yes. It was the... Uh, at that time, I was uh, just uh, 15 years old. Okay. After that, I mean, the, of course, my sense of calling was very strong, but I think uh, just uh, it kind of sometimes like uh, it, my feeling was diluted and then some kind of, mm -hmm. but I have to going back to kind. And one good thing, uh, th uh, theological seminary began uh, from the under undergraduate school. Yes. Some programs. So, yeah, I think uh, it helped me. And uh, since okay. then, yeah. I have been uh, yeah. uh, in the ministry. Yeah, the call comes, uh, however it comes, in whatever way. Right, but then, right. there, then there's the journey. Right, And right. it ebbs mm -hmm. and flows and yeah, all of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Friends, I am delighted to have today uh, as our guest, the Reverend Charlie Yang, uh, the pastor at the Boulevard United Methodist Church here in Binghamton. So you've been a part of the... Um, Upper New York Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church since it kind of came together in 2010 right. uh, mm -hmm. when we merged all of that together. Uh, and now you're uh, at, at the Boulevard United Methodist Church and right. you've been there since July, is that yeah, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This right. is the third month. Okay. Mm -hmm. How has that transition been from, and you came from the Albany area? Yeah, Albany okay. area. Uh, can so. you tell us about uh, that experience and then the transition to where you are now as to uh, uh, some of the highs and lows? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, the in, uh, general environment was not quite different. You know, Albany mm -hmm. is not far from here, just uh, two right. hours of yes. difference. And, and also, uh, I have been in the Upper New York uh, Annual Conference uh, more than 13 years yes. now, I think. Yeah. But uh, here, uh, I, and also, you know, summer is a very slow, slow than yes. other months. It is yes. kind of yes. transition, though, yeah. as was quite, yeah, smoothly went. Uh, I, I feel like, uh, I feel quite accepted by uh, my congregation. And it seems to me, at least, I think they just appre appreciated my presence over here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah. And also, as, as you see, it's, uh, I'm an Asian pastor, mm -hmm. you know, speaking English as a second language. Yes. He says that there is a, they know a certain limit, but uh, they, at the same time, they appreciate certain difference hmm. and diversity. 
Yeah. I can bring some different idea, different experience, different story to them. Yes. So I think uh, so in that sense, I, you, we mutually appreciate it. I think that, that's the lesson I, I'm learning again. When we accept a certain difference, mm. uh, of course, some people uh, object uh, because of the difference. But I think when we receive and accept a certain difference, it, we, we are... Uh, we are opening a uh, much broader opportunity yes. to learn yes. and hear the s different stories. Yes. So yes. I think in that sense, I really appreciate uh, my congregation. And also so far, I feel, yeah, yeah. Already I feel um, I'm there. So yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, uh, that, that's a wonderful point, Charlie. The, the idea of not only just accepting the diversity, but seeing it as a blessing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, yeah, it, it's yeah. not, well, we'll just kind of work our way through it and accept it. No, they, it'd be blessed by it. Right, right. Because it does take you deeper, which, mm -hmm, is, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Yeah. How would, um, how would you define your theology now? As you're sitting here, uh, we're on set and did such things, right where you are right now, um, e either how would you define your theology or what are the most important tenets of your theology? Where, where, where's that, where, where are those foundations that you've uh, come to understand? Yeah, uh, first I need to say this, you know, uh, I, I'm trying to be more theologically more central. Okay. It doesn't mean that more opportunistic or kind of, you know, some kind of, you know, I, I, uh, I don't appreciate uh, extremism in both sides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that, you know, uh, both sides, uh, 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 from my perspective, uh, from my observation, according to my observation, mutually exclusive. Mm. Mm -hmm. When we, uh, just, that's why it's, I'm taking the theologically central and, and uh, I, I, I think that this one I can say that uh, uh, I, I wrote a, a book. Uh, in that book I think I, I'm talking about the, uh, 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 of course a lot of uh, life issues and then faith and related issues uh, and of course I'm applying my theological perspective there mm -hmm. so of course I'm, I'm trying to read a lot of books written by the theologically liberal area and and at the same time the, the so more conservative area yes. too yes yes so that's why just uh, and in my I mean the can I say, say something more about uh, my book? Absolutely. Yeah, I think Absolutely. Uh, the book's title is uh, Walking with God. Yes. So just uh, last December it was published. And then uh, in that book, just I, uh, actually that book was uh, inspired by the theologian, by, by a theologian, uh, Walter Brueggemann, oh, yeah. Old oh, Testament yeah. uh, theologian. Yes. He used a quite interesting, interesting method in uh, categorizing uh, entire psalms. He put, uh, categorized the entire psalm into three different categories. Orientation, uh, disorientation, and new orientation. Mm -hmm. You know, when I uh, was, uh, uh, some days, uh, quite uh, several years ago, just when I was reading the story of uh, Prophet Elijah, you know, uh, I found out that, I mean, the the professor uh, Walter Bergman's method, you know, orientation, disorientation, new orientation, uh, so uh, uh, exactly right there. Yeah. You know, I mean, the the what's the uh, prophet Elijah at the Mount uh, Carmel. Mm -hmm. It is uh, in his career, if we see that from that perspective, it is the highest point. Yeah. He won the battle with the 450 Baal, Baal yeah. uh, prophets. Yeah. And also he, when he prayed to God for rain, God answered his prayer. Yes. You know, uh, that uh, rain uh, uh, was the uh, some of the three and uh, half years of drought. Yes. You know, I, I see that there's, uh, and also he was successful to draw back people's heart to, uh, to God. Mm -hmm. It was the, his highest moment. Yeah. But right after that, uh, if you read the, the King, the, the First Kings chapter 19, 
uh, prophet Elijah was threatened by the queen Jezebel. Mm -hmm. He was in great fear. He yes. ran to the wilderness. Yes. And then he collapsed uh, under the, uh, the, uh, some bushes. And then he, th that was the, the wilderness or desert. It was uh, his uh, lowest point. Yes. It was uh, so at the mountain, mountain comedy is orientation process. And then the wilderness is his uh, disorientation. Yes. You know, as a Christian, as a believer, as a follower of Jesus Christ, we, we feel like, uh, you know, a lot of times, like uh, we are walking in the desert. Yes. Like a disorientation moment. Yes. Yes. You know, we feel disoriented. You know, exactly the, what, that's what happened to the great prophet Elijah. Yes, yes. Right after yeah. that, after 40 days, uh, day and night uh, in the wilderness, he uh, arrived at the uh, Mount Horeb. Mm -hmm. He heard the voice of God. Yeah. And then he felt uh, calling God uh, again there. You know, Mount Horeb, uh, Horeb is uh, just, I just uh, called the place of a new orientation. Mm -hmm. I came to realize that, you know, ev you know every Christian, every believer experienced a certain moment, yeah. you know, orientation, Mount Carmel, or you might be in the wilderness, yeah. or you are just at the moment of uh, he the hearing God's voice again, yes. and then some, there's a new orientation, Mount Horeb. Yeah, yeah I think I, I applied that uh, to my, 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 my life. Yeah. Yeah, I could see every moment. Sometimes yeah. I was at the Mount yeah. Carmel. You know, I was yes. so enjoying everything yes. given to me. Oh, th thank you, God. Gratitude was there. But soon I think I experienced this as a, like a disorientation yeah. moment. Yeah. yeah, You know, still I have a lot of uh, questions and doubt, even some doubts and yeah. then through that. But for me, of course, I think I already always want to be at the Mount Carmel. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But at the yeah. same time, I mean, the, you know, <laughs> the, in the wilderness, yeah. in the desert, yeah. I was uh, really struggling. Yeah. I was, but that uh, journey, that, that part of the journey, I think for me gave more, more opportunity, more time to think about yes. God. Think yes. about life. Yes. So I felt like uh, so my my book is more allotted to that. I mean the, the disorientation yeah, part. Yeah. Why yeah. sufferings? Why so many bad things? You know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Through that, I. Yeah. Yeah. That is wonderfully put. Mm -hmm. Thank you, friends. Our guest um, is the Reverend Charlie Yang from the Boulevard United Methodist Church uh, in Binghamton. Uh, you and. You know, as you were explaining that very prophetically and wonderfully, I, I, my mind was going back to the privilege of pastoring mm -hmm. people through the mountaintops right, and the right. wilderness and everything in the mundane and, and, right, and right, everything right. in between and getting a snapshot and, and just having the privilege of walking alongside them right, right, as right. they are wherever they are in the journey. And, right, right. and I know uh, as you look at your congregation, you've got people in every, uh, every, right. every part of that spectrum yeah, yeah, of yeah. where they mm -hmm, are mm -hmm. and walking alongside them is, is certainly a, a privilege. Let me ask you this, and I, I always like to ask pastors this, uh, this question question. Um, what excites you about the ministry and what doesn't excite you about the ministry uh, that you find yourself in, right. whether it's mm -hmm. very specific or broad? Uh, but I always like to ask my colleagues that. What gets you out of bed in the morning and, and what makes you want to go back to bed? <laughs> right, right, yeah. So you can take that wherever you'd like to take that, Charlie. Yeah, I think, you know, my uh, church now, I'm the, the Blue Brother Church has uh, similar challenges that uh, most other churches mm -hmm. are having mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. You know, our social trend has, has been more, and not, I'm, just, I'm not saying the uh, anti-religious, but mm -hmm. the more, you know, if we uh, see the census, like, uh, you know, non-religious uh, is, is uh, growing so fast and Absolutely. bigger and bigger. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the, our, our context. So. Yeah, Blue Brother Church has uh, uh, exactly the same situation, and also, uh, as we know that the COVID situation made it uh, worse. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
yeah, before I came to the uh, Blue Bird Church, I knew much of, uh, many things about uh, the situation. Mm -hmm. I knew that challenge was waiting for me. So, so yeah, I think, uh, but that, that's the reality. But uh, I, the reason why just I decided to come over here, uh, so, yeah, our United Methodist system has been a little, little bit changed. So whenever a church is, uh, pops up, I think uh, uh, yeah. pastors can apply for that. Yes, yes, absolutely. So I think Very actually yes, I, yes. I apply for the uh, Blue Bible Church and yeah, Blue Bible Church has a, a, I mean the location was a, like a more urban, suburban setting. Mm -hmm. It's a, a economically and ethnically and racially more diverse yeah. than yeah. many other area mm -hmm. in this yes. area. So, yes. yeah, in the sense, I think I, I was thinking about that, uh, uh, the image of, of a, a mosaic. Mm. You know, many different pieces, uh, yes. many different colors, uh, many different uh, shapes, uh, they are making uh, beautiful pictures. Yes. So I think that was my vision. So, and, you know, uh, multi-ethnic groups uh, were here, but I, I know that Binghamton is not uh, racially very diverse, but still, I think, but still surrounding the uh, Blubad area, Blubad yes. Church, yes. is, uh, I could see some very uh, diverse groups of uh, ethnic and uh, racials and, mm -hmm. and economic. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that is my image, and, and also this is what uh, when I'm doing ministry. I mean, I already uh, delivered the message uh, I think, uh, to, to our congregation. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I personally, and then I, I believe that there are uh, three pillars that sustain a healthy church, mm -hmm. healthy Christian church. Mm -hmm. Three pillars has its own names. The first name, the first pillar's name is uh, uh, what's the uh, great uh, greatest commandments. Okay, you know, yeah. just, you know, God, love your God yeah. and love yeah. your neighbors. That's mm -hmm. one. And the second pillar's name is uh, the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. You know, just going making uh, yeah. disciple yeah. of Jesus disciples. Christ. I yep. think. Uh, yeah. We, you know, I mean the. If you are interested in making church more vital, I think you have been he I mean, uh, hearing the did, uh, two greatest commandment and uh, great commission. Yeah, yeah. But I think uh, the, the, I guess I personally just I felt I'm feeling the need of uh, having one more pillar. That is a. Uh, I say I want to just uh, uh, put it as that that's the uh, great confession. Mm, awesome. awesome. Great confession. Yes. You know, Peter's confession. Yes. You know when Jesus asked uh, who do you say yeah, I am? Yeah. So Jesus, uh, he said that uh, Jesus yeah. you are the Christ and the yeah. Messiah and the son yeah. of the living God. Charlie, I, uh -huh. I, I, I thank you for this. I, I, I thank you for this time. Uh, I thank you for your uh, willingness to answer the call to serve Jesus Christ in the church. And so friends, mm -hmm. I want to thank my brother uh, Charlie for being here. Charlie is the pastor of the Boulevard United Methodist Church. If you'd like information about the church, please contact the church and they will get to you. Have an awesome week. God bless you all.